Have you ever heard of extension tubes for a DSLR or mirrorless camera? No? I wouldn't beat yourself up about it. I've been doing photography now for about four or five years, and up until a couple weeks ago when I was researching macro lenses on Amazon, I had never heard of them either. You see, I've been wanting to try out macro photography for a while now. However, most lenses for DSLR or mirrorless cameras do not allow you to get that close to the subject with a normal lens. Even if you try to do manual focus, the lenses are just designed to only have a certain distance or a certain closeness that you can get to an object before they're not going to focus correctly. So this is where extension tubes come into play. You see, they allow you to take a normal camera lens and turn it into a macro lens, which allows you to get fantastic macro photos while saving you hundreds of dollars versus a dedicated macro lens. If you've ever researched dedicated macro lenses, uh, then you're well aware that they are not cheap and a decent one is easily going to set you back 500 to 1,000 US dollars. The best part about extension tubes is that they give you close to the same quality of images that you get from an actual macro lens, but you can pick one of these bad boys up, a set of them, for under 50 bucks on Amazon, which is quite a significant savings. If you're new to photography and have been wanting to try out macro photography but don't want to invest hundreds of dollars on a dedicated macro lens without first trying it out and making sure you actually enjoy taking macro shots, then this video is for you. In this video, I'll show you what an extension tube is, how it works, and most importantly, how to get the best results out of them. So let's go ahead and roll the intro and then we'll jump into today's video. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel where today we are discussing extension tubes. Before we jump into today's video, if you're new around here and enjoy videos related to photography, then make sure to hit the red subscribe button down below and don't forget to ring the bell next to it to be notified when I post new videos. Also, if you like this video as a way of saying thanks, don't forget to smash that like button. And if you're into gaming or you want to discuss macro lenses, extension tubes, or anything else related to photography or videography more, you can find my Twitch link here on the screen or down in the description below. Stop on in, say hi anytime you see me streaming, and I'm free to chat about anything you'd like. All right, enough with the formalities. Let's go ahead and jump into the video. So extension tubes basically turn a normal lens like this Canon EF 50 millimeter lens, it's a f1.8, very popular lens for a lot of camera owners, into a macro lens capable of taking macro photos almost near quality of a dedicated macro lens. They cost less than $50 on Amazon, which compared to a dedicated macro lens, as I said, they can save you quite a bit of money. They do this by pulling the lens on your camera away from the sensor. So literally, these things are just a plastic tube with no type of glass or anything in them. They're completely hollow. You can stick your finger all the way through them and see that they are literally plastic tubes full of air. While they're pretty simple in design, there is one thing that you need to consider when you go to purchase a set of extension tubes. You see, there are extension tubes that have electrical connectors in them, and there are extension tubes that don't. The ones with the electrical connectors allow you to still use the autofocus uh, on your camera, as well as still give you the ability to adjust the aperture of the lens you're using. If you get the ones without, the uh, electrical connectors on them, that means you're going to have to manually focus your lens every single time as well as shoot with your lens uh, aperture completely wide open. There are tricks out there to get your lens to lock in a certain aperture before you switch to an extension tube, but to be honest, it's a complete headache. So the one thing when you go to buy them that I would recommend is making sure you get the ones that have electrical connectors that allow you to autofocus and control your aperture. Again, these things cost less than 50 bucks, even the ones 
with the electrical connectors, so I would not skimp out there to save an extra five or 10 bucks. Other than that, they are all pretty much the same. Uh, and to be honest, personally, I would buy whichever ones I could get for the best price that still had a decent rating on Amazon or whatever site you use to buy your camera gear. BH Photo, Best Buy, whatever. Just make sure they have a good rating. Other than that, make sure they have the electrical connectors and you'll be good. The ones I bought are made by Viltrox. Uh, they include a 12 millimeter, a 20 millimeter, and a 36 millimeter extension tube. And if you wanna pick up the same ones that I use into, in today's video, uh, I'll go ahead and leave a link down in the description below to them on Amazon. So now you may be asking, what's the different sizes for? Well, they allow you to decide how close in or how close to the subject, how zoomed in you wanna be to your subject by determining how close or how far they move the lens away from your camera's sensor. You can achieve this by using the different sizes. Again, this set comes with a 12, a 20, and a 36. You can also combine all of the extension tubes together if you wanna get a really close up macro shot. For example, this shot here on the screen was taken with the 36 millimeter extension tube, while this shot here was taken with all three extension tubes stacked together, giving you a total of 68 millimeters. One thing to note, however, is that the more millimeters you use, so if you use, for example, the 36 versus the 12, or if you stack all three for the 68 millimeters versus the 36, the more narrow your focus plane is gonna be. What this means is that the more you zoom in, so the more extension you use, the harder it's gonna be to keep everything in focus that you're shooting. Even if you step your lens to a very high aperture like f22 or even f32 if your lens allows it. If you're taking a head-on shot, a direct shot of a flat object like this $100 bill that we're going to use for today's test, this really isn't a problem uh, and your biggest concern simply becomes making sure that you have enough light as macro photography takes a lot of light as even if you're shooting a flat object, you're probably gonna be using an aperture of at least 7.1, 11, or even higher. That way you make sure your images are sharp. If you're shooting something like a flower or a bug or something, for example, you're gonna need even more light as that 3D object is gonna require you to have an f-stop of 22 or even 32, as I said before. So now that we understand what an extension tube is and how they work, let's discuss how to actually use them. To do this, I'm gonna use this $100 bill, which is a nice flat surface, so we don't have to worry as much about the focus plane. And I'm gonna set it up here on the desk, and we're gonna first start with the just the normal 50 millimeter f1.8 lens. We're gonna get as close as we can to the bill, snap a picture of it, and that's gonna give us our starting point. Once we have that, we'll probably skip the 12 millimeter and we'll add on the 20 millimeter extension tube, take a photo of the bill from the same spot, uh, then we'll do it with the 36 millimeter extension tube, and then we'll combine a couple of the extension tubes together, ending with all of them combined together. Uh, that way you can see what we're working with from the, the normal 50 millimeter lens and then how much each of these different extension tubes allow you to zoom in. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get everything set up and then we will go ahead and come back to this and uh, we'll see exactly how it works. Hope you guys are excited. All right guys, so we have everything set up here. I have the camera ready to go. So like I said, the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and snap a picture of the $100 bill uh, just using the 50 millimeter f1.8 lens that I have. So let me go ahead and frame that. Now normally I would use a tripod to do macro photography unless I'm doing it outdoors and it's just too hard to use a tripod. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kinda use the arms of the chairs here to steady myself. And then we're gonna go ahead and snap a picture here. And I'm gonna show it on the screen for you guys now. Then we're gonna go ahead and switch off the camera. And we're gonna go ahead and add the 20 
millimeter extension to. So we would just add it onto the lens like that. And then we will get nice and close where we need to go. Now, again, you got to make sure you have enough light. I got a light behind me that's shining here. You probably can't tell in this video because I got lights everywhere, so you don't really see the difference. But as you add these extension tubes and you get further or closer and closer to the subject, you're going to want and need more and more light. So this is the 20 millimeter extension tube. We're going to go ahead and snap a picture of it. And I'm going to show it on the screen for you guys now. Then we're going to go ahead and switch to the 36 millimeter extension tube. Again, we're going to take a shot with the 36 millimeter lens. And obviously, you got to get closer and closer with the lens. And there we go. So now put a, pit, a photo of that on the screen. Again, that is with the 36 millimeter and then before we jump into adding them all together we'll do the 36 with the 12 because again you can add these or use them in any order that you want uh, it could be 12 and then the 36 it could be 36 and then the 12 like I have here doesn't matter what order you put the extension tubes and then again we got to get even closer and show the picture on the screen for you guys again that is with the 36 and the 12 uh, together and then last but not least we will add all of the extension tubes together which as you can see pulls my lens very far away from the sensor and we will take one last shot this is hard to do without a tripod because i'm shaking and the depth of field, again, as you add more and more extension tubes, your focus plane is going to get less and less. And meaning like you might be in one perfect spot here, but if you move even as I'm standing here, again, this is why I would use a tripod, because as I'm here trying to do this handheld, I can't even hardly get the camera to focus, use an autofocus, uh, because just the little bit of shakes that I'm doing is causing it to go in and out of focus. I could switch to manual and get it, but I'm just going to get my elbow here on my leg, my hand here on the chair. I'm going to rest my hand here on the desk, and then we are going to take that shot. And now I'm going to put that on the screen. Again, this is the photo of all three extension tubes combined, giving you a total of 68 millimeters of extension tubes. The last thing I want to say is you could add even more extension tubes. However, there'll be a certain point in which you add extension tubes that the lens will start focusing inside of itself and you just won't be able to go any closer. So there is a limit to how many extension tubes you can add before it's just not going to work. All right. So there you go. That's what it looks like with extension tubes. Uh, depending on which sizes you use uh, and that again is with a 50 millimeter f 1.8 lens you could of course use any lens you wanted uh, like I have this wide angle 15 to 45 millimeter lens that I could use extension tubes work with any of those so as you guys can see uh, you can get some pretty crazy macro shots with just your normal camera lens and a set of extension tubes uh, as I said earlier, if you want to pick up a set of these extension tubes, and if you want to use the exact ones you saw me using today in the video, these are for camera or Canon lenses. Uh, I'll leave a link down in the description below. Also, if you enjoyed this video as a way of saying thanks, please hit that like button. And if you want to see more photography videos like this one, make sure you smash that red subscribe button below. And don't forget to ring the bell next to it to be notified when I post new videos. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, peace out, everybody. Uh -huh.